shoes, please. Yeah, and it's almost like, like oh, this weird, oh. like, spidey, tingly sense that you get where you're just like, ah, I don't want to say Mad cringy, dude. Tell me you're Asian without telling me you're Asian. A two-part series. Welcome, everybody, to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. David, we got a list for the people today. Yeah, it was based off a Reddit thread that was going crazy. So many people were contributing different things they felt like identified you as Asian without needing to tell somebody that you were Asian. And I love these lists because it's just like a really great way to remember all the commonalities that we have amongst being like Eastern cultures, whether it's like a specific Asian or not, you know, because there are differences, but I feel like a lot of these things kind of unite us. Yeah, I mean, you could look at the score you get, you know, zero to eight, low, eight to 16, 16 to 25. We came up with 50 points. We broke it into two lists of 25. Let's get into number one. All right, guys, if you guys are excited about that list, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of Hot Pop Boys and look out for part two coming soon. All right, David, number one. Number one, you take off your shoes anytime you are in a place of personal dwelling. So that includes Airbnbs, Andrew, and it even includes hotel rooms. Yeah, man, I don't even care where I'm at. Even if I paid money to rent the room, I cannot sit on a bed with my shoes on for more than like two seconds. It feels weird. Oh, and you have to demand that your non-Asian friends also take off their shoes. I know some people yeah. are 50-50 about that because you know, you know, like, oh shit, should I apply my culture to them? No, 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 guys. That's like going to Singapore and trying to break the laws there. Don't do that when you come into my household. Number it is tough though. It is tough to tell your friends. No, it's true, it's true because because Western people, they have like a thing about feet that Asians don't have. Because Asians, I guess like Western people find feet more sexual, apparently, which is goes with the OnlyFans and the feet pics and everything like that. Whereas Asians are just like, yo, just take your shoes off because they were outside. I'm not going to lie. The last time we had a white person in our apartment, they just walked straight in and we're just like laughing and talking, just being real nice. And then it was so hard for me to be like, <laughs> oh, yo, no. um, <clears throat> can you, uh, can you just, Take off your shoes, please. Yeah, and it's almost like, oh, like this weird, oh. like, spidey, tingly sense that you get where you're just like, ah, I don't want to say Mad cringy, dude. Point number two, Andrew, you have to value minivans over monster SUVs or at least crossover SUVs like a CRV, MDX, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, man, I feel like it kind of goes along with Asian culture because Asians, they look at minivans and are like, oh, it's just as effective, but it's not as aggressive as the Suburban or the Tahoe. So I'm going for the minivan. Yeah, a lot of Asians do not get the Escalade as their daily whip. Um, I will say this, Andrew, the only American brand that I see Asians heavily buy for their family is Tesla's, and especially the Model Y, obviously with the, uh, you know, Seagull doors. Number three, Andrew, you might be Asian if you use the fingertip method before you cook rice. Okay, first of all, you might be Asian if you're cooking rice at home, okay, first of all. And second of all, man, I, you know, we don't really cook in our house right now that often, uh, but if, I, if we were to cook rice, I would still definitely use the fingertip method. No measuring cups in this house, no. uh, Point number four, and we're staying on the topic of rice. You have access to a modern rice cooker, but the older generation might prefer using an older style one. I don't really get this one though. I thought it made me laugh because our parents, you know, we bought them, uh, we're actually, we got it for a brand deal. We got a Kaku and we got a Zojirushi. But sometimes I think that, you know, for them, the, the, the $50 one is just as good as the $250 one. You mean the joint with just like one button. It's just like cook rice, boom. Not the one that goes, do you want your rice done in 30 minutes? Or like, you know, they say it in Chinese and stuff yeah, like yeah. with the AI and the LEDs and the, and the little twist top and the... Well, I'll, I'll say this, especially for the older, older generation, that can get a little too complicated. No, it's true. It's true. Sometimes cooking rice, you just want to keep it simple, man. Point number five, Andrew, you always crave something soupy when hung over or just in general, you crave soups and stews. Um, yeah, so obviously in Western culture, they do have soups and stews, but I definitely don't hear American people want those beef <laughs> stews as bad as we would say, yo, I need pho. Oh my gosh, I need like gamja tang or something. You know, like, you know how like Asians will just say that and then, uh, or, oh, I need kanji, you know? Yeah, but then it seems like European <laughs> descent people are really removed from wanting goulash. But it's funny because me, I got exposed to like some Eastern European like stews and soups recently. And I was like, Man, I don't know why people in America don't eat these more. I love goulash. David, you know what white people say when they got a hangover? Dude, I need another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, uh, Asian noodle soups and stews are probably almost like the thing that outpaces 
other cultures by the largest margin. You know, and I'm talking about everything from the Himalayas, they got Tukpa, to everything, Lao, Isan, they got some crazy good noodle soups. Obviously up to East Asia, beef noodle soup, uh, gamjatangs or, or sobas and things like that. Point number six, Andrew, liking gross fermented foods that people in the West would be turned off by, such as durian, jackfruit, spam, squid jerky, dried crab, anchovies, natto from Japan. Some people even said the civet poop coffee, the pork floss, kewpie mayo, and baked items. Yeah, man. I mean, I think those are all acquired tastes for the most part. Um, I do see dried jackfruit being sold at like Target now from like American brands. Um, but everything else I would say like definitely looks still pretty foreign to people. But I, I, I do I do see more and more Westerners like opening up to that. Maybe they've been to an Asian bakery or had, you know, some Asian food before. And now durian is reaching the mainstream as a mainstream weird thing. Yeah, I knew because, uh, you know, shout out to our friend, Dr. Rubenstein. He started posting himself eating jackfruit and durian and like sour sops and stuff like that. And I always remember going, Oh, so interesting. But Andrew, it also says that you must not like USA grocery store cakes because they're too sweet. And also, obviously, in Asia, they do not have a lot of shops, Andrew, similar to Sweet Factory, where it's just like pure candy coated with like more candy. Yeah, think of how weird that is to certain people where you're like, yeah, uh, guys, you know, I don't like stuff that's too sweet. You know, um, and I just like this weird, funky, fermented fruit. <laughs> and then, and then, and then everybody else has just got to be like, yeah, you're so Asian, man. Like, this is just weird. Oh, or that white, like, toffee with the nuts in it that's, like, really not that sweet either. It's almost like, uh, yeah. Oh, the one sweet thing that I do think Asians like is Ferrero Rocher, which is not that sweet. It's more hazelnut. And also almond raka. Yeah. But usually, you know, especially if you're Chinese and especially Cantonese, you'll like those little, uh, the, the angel food cake, the little cupcakes. All right, what about those Italian uh, Pantone cakes? Moving on, number seven, Andrew. We're still on the topic of food. You have to be surprised that Fear Factor had contestants pick between eating scorpions and thousand-year-old eggs. Man, this was crazy when I first saw this clip because I remember people had to eat the pidan, like the thousand-year-old egg, the one that we put in kanji all the time, and they were like, bleh, bleh. And I was just like, dude, it's just literally like fermented with some salt. It's Yo, crazy. one time on Fear Factor, this lady had to eat one extra balut for another $10,000 and she would not do it. Oh, but David, if I was on that show, I would be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would eat balut too, but I had balut. It's, it's good. I wouldn't say balut is great. I wouldn't choose to eat it a bunch, but it's not that bad. Point number eight, Andrew, you never really watched Saturday morning cartoons because you either had mother language school or violin lessons or potentially extra school work. All right, Dave, I got to say, I got to admit something, you know, for me, clearly I was not going to the language school on the weekends growing up. Oh, you did though. For a few times, for like <laughs> half a year, I barely remember it. Um, but yeah, obviously, this is a huge part of, of growing up Asian. And particularly, I would say, especially for languages such as Chinese or Korean, uh, you know, and a lot of the Chinese schools were ran by Taiwanese people. Yeah, there's just a gigantic economy around, like, I guess, learning the mother language. Um, I would say, yeah, it really depends on, like, how strong of tiger parents your parents were. And I always tell people that, you know, when it comes to having tiger parents, Andrew, you're, you can be zero, one, two, three, four, or five. You know, your one neighbor, like Johnny, who was like yelling at his mom, he probably was at a zero, but then your one kid at church who had to like do five hours of piano a day and, or else he'd like get beat senselessly was probably like a five. So let's be realistic in that scale. Our parents were what a 2.5. Yeah, man, we became YouTubers. Can't be that big of a type of, type of parents. <laughs> Number nine, Andrew, you would get disciplined when you were a child with some sort of item that went from any tier of pain from slight hurt to stinging pain. So I'm talking about rolled up newspapers, back scratchers, bamboo brooms, rulers, slippers, feather dusters, clothing hangers, wooden dowel rods. You know, for us growing up, I don't remember getting hit with anything, but I do remember dad yanking our ears. Yeah, so we did get punished, but but maybe not with like a ruler or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I always like to th uh, rank things on like zero, one, two, three, four, five. I would say in terms of like physical violence on the kids to, you know, get them to behave right. We probably got like a 1.5 or a two, but I definitely knew kids, Andrew, especially if the parents came from more like military mandatory service type countries. Sometimes those kids, man, if you messed up, 
you might get beat up. I feel bad for the man. I heard some really bad stories. I just hope it was all for the better. Oh, I but you know what? That I just hope that it, 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 they had got something to show for it. Hey, but you know what the key is? If you're Asian, even if you know somebody at your church or like a friend of a friend that's getting beat by their parents, obviously you don't tell anybody. That's just what it is. That's the culture. Point number 10, Andrew, having some sort of shrine inside the house to the ancestors, something that is Buddhist or Taoist or something that you would burn, any type of thing that indicates some sort of like, you know, photos of the grandparents with some sort of reverence. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously there are a lot of like Christian Asians or Catholic Asians, but I will say if you got the shrine, the Buddhist shrine, that that's... That's extra points right there. And, you know, uh, definitely knew a lot of friends growing up like that. Every restaurant we'd go into, you know, you'd have, like, the oranges out with the candle and everything like that. So, uh, you see it all the it time. It was levels. It was levels. But if you growing up and you're Asian, even if you didn't have it in your house, you saw it. Number 11, Andrew, you can speak more than one language because for the most part in America, you can assume if somebody speaks more than one language, they are second generation immigrant and their parents are probably either from Asian countries or latin countries yeah well i do think uh a lot of your ability to speak another language depends on your parents inability to speak english oftentimes growing up in america so if they don't speak english you're definitely speaking your mother tongue often right so you're gonna be good at it um so yeah i mean obviously if your parents speak less english you're probably less americanized and less westernized <laughs> yeah i mean if you tell me that you speak english and like language x and those are the only two languages you speak i'm gonna assume obviously with a high probability not 100 percent probability that you belong to group x point number 12 andrew your parents have a drawer filled with plastic bags man you know how i know this is true is because in our apartment right now we have a drawer filled with plastic bags i feel like i definitely tried to like stop doing it as much as i got older though because at some point you really only need like five or six bags you don't need like 60 of them no 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 you're right you're right i try to limit it you know we have them under the sink but we still i still use the plastic bags here and there and, and plus you know you want to reuse plastic bags you don't want to just throw them away because you know that's just more waste point number 13 andrew a b plus was unacceptable and an a minus was barely acceptable to your parents standard yo did anybody say that getting a b plus in english class was more acceptable than getting a b plus in math though i feel like for a lot of kids like maybe some parents might give them a little okay you gotta be in english but not well, yeah. math. well because you're saying the parents are also not necessarily that good at english themselves i don't know i, I feel like some parents did um i was trying to think about this one and it really depends on how tough your parents are with grades um, I definitely know that up until a certain point, maybe like my junior or senior year, my parents really, really did not like to see bees come home. Yo, I'll tell you this, man. If your parents are the ones that are out protesting the Harvard admissions and like <laughs> the elite high school admissions, uh, good luck. You better get straight A's. Number 14, Andrew, your parents and you possibly never use the dishwasher. Yo, man, this is wild because actually you were writing this video and then you literally yell at me. You go, Andrew, do we have a dishwasher in this apartment? And I literally went, I think we do. And then I went to go open the dishwasher for like the second time since we moved in because I forgot we had it. Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you that old habits, they die hard, you know. And, you know, I looked into it. Using a dishwasher is considered more sanitary, less bacteria because you're not using the same rag or the same sponge or whatever. But just, uh, man, wait, wait, wait. So you tell me, it. so you're telling me people are going to run around the house with their shoes on and jump on their bed with their shoes on, but then use the dishwasher because it's more sanitary. I actually think Hypocritical. Western people. I actually think that Western people use the dishwasher because it's easier. But it just so happens that it is also more sanitary because the water is so hot. True, true, true. Point number fifteen, Andrew, washing your dog's feet and butt before they come back into the house or hop into the bed or hop into a couch. So this one is basically saying that I guess when Asians have pets, they they wipe them extra clean. I mean, I knew I my my ex would always wipe down all the feet, but I thought that was pretty standard. But you said. Our friend John actually wipes the butt down every time too. Yeah, he wipes down the feet and the butt because obviously he does not want the dog tracking anything dirty back into the house because he's about to cuddle with him. Again, it goes back to wearing no shoes inside the house. Uh, I think so. Number 16, Andrew, there's Tupperware with all types of exotic herbs and spices deep in the pantry from anywhere from three to 15 years ago. Dude, 
It's crazy, man. If you were to look back into your pantry of your of your parents' house, and you'll see like bottles where like the label is like crusty and it's faded, and then like all the sediment or like the the stuff has like fallen to the bottom, whatever stuff is in the sauce, and then you're just like, what is this? Oh, Happens also, nothing will be necessarily in the corresponding container. It might be like a box full of cookies filled with like a box full of herbs or something like that. Dude, my whole rule is now that I grow up, man, if you haven't used it for like two years, you got to toss it, man. If you haven't even looked oh, at something for two years. You're not being years. with the old ways. I'm not that traditional, man. Number 17, Andrew, you buy rice anywhere in the volume of 15 to 50 pounds at a time. Dude, the memories of climbing up bags of rice at the Chinese supermarket when we were younger. So we're good memories, man. But yeah, obviously nowadays, obviously, especially if you're living in, in a small apartment in New York, you don't have space for a 50 pound bag. But of course, I remember that at home. Yeah, I think it's pretty common. I think at the end of the day, because people ate so much rice growing up. David, do you think that nowadays families are eating like a little less rice or, or families are still probably eating a lot of rice, but just like people our age maybe are eating less. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you want to talk about second generations where obviously we grew up and rice was pretty much available like all times of the day. I mean, uh, I, I don't have rice ready to go right now because obviously just living a more Western lifestyle. And it as it turns out, Andrew, Andrew, I hate to break it to people, white jasmine rice is not that healthy for you. <laughs> Number 18, Andrew, you enjoy fresh squeezed sugarcane juice. All around Asia, from Southeast Asia to East Asia, people just love a good freshly squeezed sugarcane drink. Yeah, I think this is a funny one because it kind of goes back to Asians not liking things too sweet. But sometimes that fresh sugar cane can be hella sweet. But it's a different type of sweet. It's not a processed sugar. Okay. It is. It tastes more like rock sugar. Asians do use rock sugar. I remember we always had rock sugar at home. Asians do love rock sugar. Number 19, eating pasta, salad, Cheetos, chips, but with chopsticks. Yeah, I even saw, man, there was like this commercial for this Japanese um, tool that was like, they were like chip pinchers, like specifically for chips, like designed for that. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. But yeah, obviously I've seen people do this. You know, I never did this, but I made sure to eat chips with only two fingers. I don't understand my friends, and they were non-Asian, who would use all five fingers to grab chips. Unless you're grabbing a bunch of popcorn, why would you get all all your fingers greasy just for one chip. Um, also, Andrew, there is a famous photo of a Chinese guy eating pizza with chopsticks. Oh, also beating eggs with chopsticks when you're trying to beat eggs for a recipe. So you don't need a whisk. I still beat eggs with chopsticks to this day. Number 20, Andrew, the ability to do a deep Asian squat. Hell yeah, man. Mobility, flexibility, very much valued in the Asian culture, man. Actually, in Asia for a while, I mean, I think it's different now. They did not always have like all Western toilets. You had to squat to use the restroom sometimes to go number two, but actually, Andrew, physiologically, that's a much more efficient way to poop. Yeah, but uh, it's also just like a, I guess more throwback way. I don't know. It's you know, old like, school, it's it, old school. It but, is but, technically healthier for you though. I used to do it in China. Once you did it, once you've done it out in like one of those little outhouses over in like a remote part off the highway in China, man. You just, I'm down to squat anywhere now. Yeah, when you have uh, diarrhea though, it's a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, also you gotta watch out for your pants, man. By your ankles, you gotta like sit backward. I don't know, but it, 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 I, sitting down is more comfortable. I've shit on my pants before. Number 21, you do bowing of some type. Obviously, some Asians bow a lot more than others. Japanese and Koreans probably do it every day. Other people might do it during special ceremonies or if they're meeting somebody really important or they're seeing their grandparents or great-grandparents, but there is bowing. Yeah, I've, obviously, I think when it comes to like the, when you're seeing like, you know, a grave, obviously a lot of people still bow, whether or not that is like part of your religion or not like that. But I will say this, man. When I go to like certain Japanese and Korean spots, I feel I bow a little bit. Like I'm not like a full bow, but just like a, a little. Yeah, I mean, you want to adapt to this. This is how they hi, do things. Hi, no, the classic. Hi, hi, oh, thank you, thank you. Like I literally do that still nowadays. Number 22, Andrew, kids made fun of your lunch at school. And uh, I do know some kids who went through this. 
I personally never went through this because I would just eat the school lunch. But I will say that there were certain times where like I just knew mom wasn't going to pack like a normal field trip lunch. Like if it was one of those field trips where they didn't provide lunch for you, I just like asked for the Lunchable because that was the one time where mom would buy it because she thought they were too expensive. But otherwise, it was just going to be something not necessarily that appealing. All right, man. So there was this kid, Gary Yao, and he would always bring these fire Chinese lunches in a tin that, where it was still hot, right? So other people might have thought that it was funky smelling, but I was like, oh, I want that. So then I told mom, I was like, mom, Gary's bringing all this food to lunch. Mom, can I? Can you like pack me some dumplings? And then mom was like, okay, all right, I'll try to do dumplings. Don't, don't eat the school lunch. I'll pack you dumplings. And then I opened up my dumpling pack one time, and the soy sauce had spilled everywhere and spread everywhere, and it was just a huge mess. And then after that, I was kind of like, oh, man, mom, I don't know. This didn't really work out <laughs> number 23 you became aware of asian medicines whether they were traditional or stuff like tiger balm before you were even aware of american products yeah man tiger balm for everything if you're in a traditional household obviously nowadays with modern medicine i don't know i mean i think some parents are still going to tiger balm number one or number two at least yeah and uh and or salon pass patches roto eye drops a lot of stuff from japan you know some parents andrew they still use just like the products from asia like i know some uh people that are like still using like their their favorite shampoos and stuff are just like the ones from asia andrew i know like at nelson's house all the shampoos and hand soaps are the ones from hong kong yeah the ones you can get at like watson's in hong kong except you just get them here andrew number 24 you know you're asian if you told your other asian friends that your mom just wanted you to be happy in life and that your other asian friends were shocked when you said that dude I don't know if this is like a millennial Asian thing. I don't know how different the parents are today, you know, that are raising like an 18-year-old Asian person. But man, parents did not think about the word happy a lot because they just figured anything that made you happy was frivolous growing up. All that fun, frivolous. Hanging out with girls, frivolous. Getting tattoos, frivolous. Hanging out, frivolous. Oh man, getting tattoos to our, at least our parents, that's worse than frivolous. Yeah, that's a, that's a death note. <laughs> Yeah, you're just being a bad person in the society. <laughs> you're being evil. You're being a drug. You turn into a drug lord if you get a tattoo in my house. Yeah. Um, number 25, earwax digger spoons. Dude, the classic, man. I still see this on the street sometimes. Like last time we went into China, maybe more in the neighborhood area, where someone's turned over on a person's lap and like they're picking it out. I think you can pay them to do it. Yeah, no, depending on how rural of an area you're in, I saw people get it done just like at McDonald's. Dude, I don't know if I would trust a stranger with my eardrum but i did hear because i was always wondering i was like yo how easy is it to puncture an eardrum while doing that and i heard from some people they're like it's not as easy as you think you'd have to really jam it in there so basically every time that you think it hurts it's not like that close to damaging you and i think that you need the spoons because a lot of asians not all asians have like very dry brittle almost like uh booger crumbs looking like earwax so it's like really hard to dig it out i actually believe andrew it's because a lot of asians it's like their earwax is kind of like dandruff so it's like kind of, you got to pick it out. Yeah, man. You're Asian probably also if uh, you've ever shaken your head and then heard your earwax rattle around in your head before. That's definitely happened to me. Andrew, did you know that this is actually what like Western people's earwax looks like? It looks more like welted, melted wax. Yeah, I, I didn't really know why uh, they call the earwax when my stuff was flaky because wax is like gooey and stuff like that and flowy, but yeah, I, apparently it is soft and liquidy sometimes. All right, you guys, that does it for list number one. That was one through 25. We got 25 through 50 coming up later. Let us know where you scored 816 or 25, low, middle, high. I mean, Andrew, that's just kind of like a fun trip down memory lane. Yeah, it's also a fun thing to do to kind of realize how Americanized or how Westernized you are versus like the traditional. I'm not saying it's bad, to not be traditional because I would I wouldn't expect a lot of people like us to to be even 25 out of 25 maybe. I am purposely not going to continue some of these. I don't think that it's like <laughs> 
purposely a hundred out of a hundred, like the way you were raised was like absolutely the best method. You it's, do it's not still like you cherish it. You cherish it because that's real to your upbringing, but you don't have to continue it forever. A hey, respect it, but you don't have to be defined by it right now. All right. But anyways, let us know down below what your score is or what your kid's score is. Maybe if you have kids, but anyways, it's fun. Let us know. Um, yeah. Hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Part two is coming up soon. 26 to 50. Let's go.